Hello everyone and welcome back to the This Is The Music Meets podcast, an independent podcast show that's dedicated to introducing you to rising indie and alternative artists from across the UK and Ireland. If you are new to the podcast, then please hit that subscribe button so we never miss out on any future episodes and feel free to leave a comment and a rating as it really does help us beat those algorithms. It's now time for episode 114 and I'm delighted to be joined by rising Manchester solo artist Tom Clegg, otherwise known as Caesar of Somatics. Over the course of today's podcast, we're going to talk about the debut EP called If It Weren't For Them, the merch giveaway as well that he's currently running over on his Instagram page, his recent return to Manchester Academy Free, playing at Venture Festival and much, much more. So, Tom, it's a warm welcome to you uh, to the This Is The Music Meets podcast. How are you doing? I'm very warm, Mark. But <laughs> apart from that, I think, you know, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Good stuff. Yeah, I totally agree there with you yeah. about the um, about the heat. And um, yeah, we're never happy. We moan if it rains or That's if it's the thing. cold. That's the thing. And it's snow or it rain, it's too hot and we moan about that as well. And I believe that um, we're recording this on a Monday evening um, and I believe that tomorrow is going to be even warmer. So uh, yeah, sure, please, please be recording looked. it today when it's a bit cooler, right? I haven't, I haven't looked at the weather, so I'm already just dreaded now. I don't, don't want <laughs> to open the app. Don't make me look, Mark. Please, please. <laughs> the bearer of bad news, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, obviously, as he's on trend at the moment, not just the weather, um, obviously, it's the Olympics has been on, uh, started on Friday. Um, have you managed to catch any of it yet? I have not caught any of it. I'm not a big, I'm not a big sports fan, as you can tell, as, yeah. as you can tell by my, for the, for the audio <laughs> listeners, I'm flexing right now and there's not much there. So <laughs> there, there's your answer. But. Yeah, there you go. Well, I must have, I only, only, I think I saw, um, one of the swimming races yesterday and that's been about it and it's been oh, on for about four or yeah. five days. I'm not that fussed really, but uh, yeah, as I say, it's on topic. So uh, you have to ask <laughs> these questions, right? right? Fair enough. Yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah. So um, obviously we've got, as I said there in the intro, we've, we've clearly got, um, you know, quite a lot to talk about and to find out um, about your musical journey so far. But I think it's probably only fair to really that we start at the beginning so how then did you first get into sort of music? Was there a particular band or, or maybe a song or an album or something that you, that you know, that you first heard and you sort of thought, oh, you know, I'm really into this? Yeah, well, I, was, I wasn't really like big into music when I started playing guitar because my dad just came in my room and he was like, hey, Tom, is my guitar. My other two sisters hadn't been asked to learn it. So <laughs> he was like, here you go. Uh, and he let me. T- he taught me two chords, which was G, E minor, and I learned Songbird by Oasis. And yeah, um, but I'd say I'd say the first like proper time that I really got into into music uh, was when he would play Script of the Bridge, uh, the album by the Chameleons. Right. Uh, I think it was Here Today. That was the main song that he'd always thrash out at, at, like after uh, when I'd be coming home from school with him in the car. Yeah. And that was sort of the start of being like, right, this is this is what I want to do. This is what I want to look at and sort of go down this direction. Um, so, yeah, pretty much that. So you were you were kind of like then your dad's last hope then for, for being musical then? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, he, he used to do music. So it, it's one of those. I think I think it's just in the blood of the Clegg family. Uh, family. Um, my uncle Andy Clegg, he was in the Chameleons and stuff and like some of the music for average. And so he's a big like link to the Manchester scene and stuff like that right um so it's it's one of those where you know runs yeah. in the blood that sort of thing <laughs> sure okay so then obviously you said their um songbird uh, by oasis was was the first song that you learned so in terms of your own sort of you know i guess what's the right word i guess maybe like interest and when when at what point did you decide that you actually wanted to start you know writing your own your own music well there was there, quite quick it 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 did yeah it happened it happened quite quick um in a way where um i started watching this artist who you know is a, he's a bit controversial now but um wilbur Sutt, um and right. he was he was like a big internet personality sort of thing um and he made these comedy songs um so i was like i want to have a go at that so the first ever song that i wrote was like a stalker comedy song 
about me as a 13 year old stalking stalking this woman who was a, a twitch streamer and and i'd and i'd be like i'm i'm running from the fbi now and it's just back then i thought it was funny for a different reason now it's just like i was 13 and singing about stalking a woman and <laughs> and and running away from the fbi and i think i think that's where the the funny part came from really <laughs> And yeah. that one's gonna stay in the archives, I assume. That's stay. That's staying in the. Well, who knows? One day, one day, I might whip it out um, <laughs> for for a live gig. Maybe a future headline. I don't know. <laughs> Brilliant, love that. And then, at what point then did you did you get your name? Because obviously, you know a lot of because you are not to give too many sort of the information away at this sort of early stage. But obviously, you are. It is a solo art project, but you are mm. obviously you have got a band. I've got a um, band with me, yeah, well. yeah. Well, but obviously, so obviously, a lot of people when they're solo, they obviously just go with you know their name. Yeah. Um, so you've obviously gone completely against the grain with that. With obviously, as we've, we've said in the intro, there you've obviously you've gone with uh, Caesar of Cymatics. So yeah, firstly, then why why did you go with a name, and was is there any meaning at all within the name that you've chosen? Yeah, yeah. So. Um, I, I was getting quite badly bullied at school oh, when I started okay. doing the project. So I was sort of like, right, I want to, I want to remain anonymous. Um, I had a mask on as well for most of the time when doing like, you know, um, uh, promotion for my music and stuff like TikToks, uh, cause I sort of wanted to build this character, which was separate to me. Um, and now it's, it's sort of, you know, going in the direction where I don't need to do that anymore and I yeah, can be yeah. myself. And I think that's one of the more redeeming qualities about the project. Um, but yeah, the name. Um, well, I I really liked the word cymatics. I'd always yeah. use it because I'd be I'd be writing songs. I'd always use the word um, in in English when when writing when doing creative writing. I'd always be using the word, uh, and it, it was a word that my dad showed to me. And essentially, cymatics is uh, a form of science and the way that frequency affects uh, natural things. So there's a there's a key video um about cymatics which shows um a, a metal plate and a speaker underneath and there's a bunch of sand on top and they played a specific three, uh, frequency through the speaker um and it essentially made patterns within the sand and i was like this is this is this is mint this is, mint. <laughs> this is brilliant and then the C the caesar part came from sort of alliteration and stuff like that um and as well as that a, a slight inspiration for it was actually doctor who um because i liked the name the doctor um yeah, and i yeah. was like oh it'd be cool to have something like caesar or something like you know a bit a bit of like a title um, yeah yeah so yeah that, that's pretty much how the name came about yeah well it's i mean that, that's that's quite interesting there especially as well you saying in the beginning that you wanted to try and build um you know a bit of a character as well kind of mm. you know behind it and i guess maybe at a later date, maybe there might be sort of, you know, maybe a, an, an advanced, you know, more of a story type of thing behind the character, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, for sure. But yeah, that's really, that's really, really cool. And I'm being a bit of a Doctor Who fan myself. Um, yeah, yeah. That's quite cool. I like that. <laughs> oh, I'm, a huge, I'm a huge fiend, mate. I've, I've got my poster up over there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I must admit, I haven't, um, I haven't watched uh, the most recent series. I watched that's the specials right. that they did, but I haven't actually, um, watched it yet i wasn't yeah i'm not too keen yeah. it's it's a bit it's a bit of a mixed bag i think i think i think once yet I, I got into it and i was like okay there's quite there's quite a few good episodes here um so you know it's it's one of those you just gotta give it a chance i think give it a chance yeah there you yeah. go that's what i need to do right as soon as we finish that's what i'll be doing tonight yeah. no, <laughs> uh, no love island in my house <laughs> whack on whack on space babies trust me it's an hour of pure viewing just brilliance <laughs> There we go. We're not just not just music recommendations on the uh, on the podcast tonight. <laughs> As well, yeah. <laughs> so um, you obviously first started releasing music uh, in 2022 uh, when you put out. Uh, it's called "It's Plain Nothing." Um, it's plain B side. Uh, sorry, knowing. Sorry, yes. <laughs> um, and the B side um, as well, which is is obviously quite a rarity. Um, in these sort of this age most people just put out a, um, a single but that was called vaping made her boring um, and between them they've racked up um, a highly impressive 21,000 
uh, streams over on Spotify. Um, nice? <laughs> kind of like... <laughs> didn't, didn't know that. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Oh, See, I, we've I, got, I haven't got... my analytics in months. I've just been like... You know, that, that's, that's crazy, though. That's there brilliant. you go. Well, congratulations, and uh, sort of quite pleased to sort of break the news, um, really, in, in some respects. Um, yeah. But looking back on that release, um, you know, I was say, t- uh, back in 2022, um, did you ever anticipate that you were going to get, you know, such brilliant um, streams for the, for the debut single? I don't think so. The thing is, right, I when when it first got put out, I wasn't a big fan of it because it was a song that I'd written when I was 14 and I was like, oh, I can do so much better than that. And my ego sort of got in the way of realising, hang on, it's just, it's a good pop tune. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of good hooks in it. Um, so I can kind of see why it's got, why it's, you know, become the most popular. And as well as that, because it's been up for the longest. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's it's it's quite a wide reaching track, I think. But it's, you know, I, th- I don't know. It's, it was strange at the time, obviously, um, when I started it because I didn't know how it was going to go. I had sort of had an experience with, you know, like stuff like social media marketing and stuff. So I was like, okay, I can try and play on that a bit. Um, but, you know, I, th- I think it was in like the first couple of weeks, I think it got like a thousand. And I was like, this is brilliant. Right. I need to, I need to focus down now. I need to, I need to get my head in. Um, but yeah, I yeah. I mean, it is it is obviously a fantastic tune. And then oh, um, you kind of like had a little bit of a break um, before putting out three singles um, mm. in twenty twenty three, and they've done very very well as well. Um, you've gone just past the twenty three thousand uh, Spotify stream mark on on that as well, which again is a is a fantastic achievement. Um, looking at the releases that you put out last year, is there a personal favourite at all? Oh yeah, definitely Sunday Morn. I, I think I, I personally think it's the best track I've ever written. It's the most meaningful track for me. It came out exactly how I wanted, which was the first time that you know, as soon as I'd released the track, I was like, "That's brilliant!" You know, I was like, "Oh, this is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted out of it." Um, so yeah, it's got to be Sunday Morn, hundred percent. Yeah, and and when you're um... You know, when you are writing and, and recording, are you doing that all, all you know, yourself, or is you going into a studio to get that done as well? No, no. Well, there's there's been a couple of um, studios which I've been in for the first two releases. It's playing Knowing and uh, Drawn and Rubber. I worked with a man called Oz Cooper, um, and he was part of uh, Paris Angels uh, for a while. And obviously, my uncle and my dad knew him from back in the day, and they've worked with him before. Um, so that was how that came about. And then for the next few singles. Um, and as well as demos, I started working at my friend uh, Click's place, um, and he, he did the B side, so it's plain knowing and uh, drawn and rubber. So that that was that was really good. Um, and then after that, Dylan, who is now my bassist as well, um, he he said, "Listen, mate, do you want to come around record some stuff at mine?" And I was like, "Yeah, you know what, sounds good." Um, and then we've been working together ever since. So yeah. Oh, that's quite. That's really good then, actually, that you're you know reaching out of the now is obviously part of the band as well, but reaching out with other musicians as well to try and you know come up with with different sounds and and stuff like that. Exactly, I think that's yeah. quite important to do that. Then I think it's very important. I feel like if you pigeonhole yourself into having one singular sound or one singular sort of production style surrounding the music, I think it I think it can become very tiring very easily. Yeah. And especially for the fans as well, I feel like they they get something out of the fact that every single release is just completely different. Like it's yeah. plain knowing sounds nothing like drawing in rubber. Sunday morning sounds nothing like vapor made a boring, you know, and so on and so on. Um, so I feel like that's that's definitely the appeal for me anyway, and I'm sure it is for other people as well. Yeah, no, definitely, I can I definitely um, agree there because it must, you know, for you as well, it must be quite, you know, would would potentially become quite boring just writing in the same the same style yeah. um, having sort of you know the same um you know soundscape um as well with with, with each song um, and i think really you, you you touched there um a little bit on the sound and i think it's fair to say that that the ep uh, it's obviously your debut ep uh, that came out last week um is really that sort of I guess kind of like sums that up in in pretty well because it's the sound is completely different 
to anything else that you've put out so far. So that was obviously like a a conscious a conscious decision to do that. Yeah, yeah, it really was. Um, because I wanted I wanted to do a you know a really massive scale song, you know, sort of like an anthem type thing, which is where Where Have You uh, Gone came from. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, I haven't I haven't really done enough like slower acoustic things which i think would you know i mean it's always sparked my interest i started out writing you know small little folk type Mm -hmm. um acoustic songs um and then that's sort of how i was like right i'm gonna write the cp and then after that um now that this is released i'm gonna start going back into pop tracks again and i think that's you know a good way to spice things up it's a good way to get different listeners as well specifically um and you know just test your songwriting ability as well yeah, sure. And, and as I say, it's um, the EP is obviously called uh, "If It Weren't for Them." It's it's, so it's been out for um, for about a week now. Um, so what what's the reaction been like to it across your socials? It's it, it really has. It's, I, I know a lot of you know artists use this, but the reaction has genuinely been really overwhelming. Because um, obviously, when, when you release something like this that's not pop focused or anything like that you expect people to sort of shove it to the sidelines and be like oh it's, it's a bit it's a bit miserable isn't it you know that, that sort of thing <laughs> but i mean the, the reaction's been brilliant and you know more than i could have expected um and you know it is it's you know it really is like the the fans and stuff and people on socials who have really been you know pushing pushing it and you know giving me loads of feedback as well on what they liked about it, what they disliked about it which I think is a really important thing because not not a lot of artists have that sort of interaction with their listeners where yeah. you know the listeners can tell them what what they enjoyed about the EP, what they didn't enjoy, you know, what should be worked on in the future. Um, so yeah, I, th- I think that's I think yeah, it's just, it's just brilliant. It's just brilliant, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. And I know obviously we were just saying there about you know um, that you wanted to change the, the sound a little bit so it made it fresh and exciting for yourself and. And obviously, hopefully as well um, for the for the fans, for the listeners, and everything else. But I guess as well, you don't as an artist, you don't. Obviously, on the one hand, you do want someone going, "Oh, Tom, that's amazing, you're the best," and, and all of that. But on the other hand, you want someone to turn around and go, you know, "Hang on a minute, Tom. I, yeah, I, I don't like that. Do you know what I mean?" So, well, that's the thing because I'm quite young, so all all feedback for my music is welcome, and I've still got a lot of you know to work on on my songwriting. Um, and, you know, but I also think that's kind of what is part of the charm. I think it's because of how immature the songwriting style is um, and how, you know, young I am and stuff. I think that's that's where a lot of the appeal comes from. Um, you know, you know, have it, having an artist where you can see them grow and, yeah. and change in their sound um, from a young age as well, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, th- I think that's the sort of key thing. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I can totally understand uh, what you're saying there. So um, just moving away um, from the live, uh, sorry, not from the live, that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> sorry, from the uh, from the studio. Um, you never guess what we're going to talk about next. Um, no, Mark, tell me. <laughs> the anticipation is killing me. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about um, live music. Um, you've obviously been quite busy over the last sort of couple of weeks or so. Uh, you've obviously played at the main stage, main stage uh, at Venture Fest, um, and also as well, you made a return back to uh, Manchester Academy Free. So, first of all, let's talk about uh, Venture Fest. Um, how was it for you? Because I believe that um, you and you obviously put a band together for that, but there was only um, a couple of days sort of practice. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, there was, and we had no way to practice as a full band, but. All in all, I think it came out. I think it came out brilliant. And um, Olivia and Isaac, uh, otherwise known as First Shaw, um, they they were absolutely brilliant, and they smashed it in literally three days. And I think that's just you know goes to show how if you work at something really hard, if you just grind it out, then you know you can do it within three days. Do you know what I mean? And it's a yeah. it's a tribute to their talent as well. Um, so yeah, I'm, I was really I was really happy with how it ended up. You know, coming out and sounding and um, how people received it in the audience and stuff. I think that was great. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, sure. And um, was that your first first festival appearance? It was, actually. No, I think about it. <laughs> I've, I've got those. Yeah. <laughs> first festival appearance, yeah. Um, 
yeah, it was. It was, it was a really interesting experience. It's completely different from live gigs, obviously, and playing like, you know, venues and stuff and being inside a really warm room. Because now, you know, I mean, yesterday it was nice and cool and I could play without sweating so much. <laughs> so that, that was nice. That was a nice feeling for once. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it was really cool. It was really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And um, and as I say, obviously, I uh, mentioned Manchester Academy Free uh, as well. There's so obviously, a, a, you know, an iconic uh, venue. Um, and I believe as well, that was the scene of your first gig, right? So it was. So first of all, how how can you remember that far back to your first gig? Obviously, within the last you know couple of years or so, or last year, uh, sorry, in fact. Um, so what was it like being back? I mean, well, here's the thing as well. It, it's it's really weird. I feel like Academy Three is a bit of a home for me music wise because that was where I went to my first ever gig. I went to see oh. um, the, there was an old uh, British uh, Britain's Got Talent band. It was the teenage band uh, Chaps Thirteen. I right. think it was. And I was 11. So I was like, oh, this is really cool. You know, I, I just started playing guitar and I was like, it's really cool. I want to do that. So I went to see them perform at Academy Three and that was my first ever gig. Um, and then, you know, my first ever actual gig playing that, it was like, this is, you know, it, it was it was really quite surreal. Um, and then obviously coming back literally nearly a year later, I think it was like a two day, like, Three three hundred and sixty three day period or something, and then I came back and I played it again, and it was just you know, I mean, it was even better than the first, and it was just it it really was it felt really surreal, and felt like you know it felt like I was able to see the growth in in real time from that, seeing yeah. you know how it was at the first gig, and how it was like you know a lot of family members, a lot of friends, and then you know suddenly there's people in the front row who have got my t shirt on and stuff. And I'm just like, ah, it's crazy. You know, it's it's it really is. It's surreal. You can't you can't really put it into proper words. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You really yeah. can't. <laughs> yeah, no, that that sounds amazing. And I think as well, that must be, um, you know, as an artist, as you, as you just said there, it's obviously great having, you know, family and friends turning up. But obviously, eventually, you want you want you know non friends, so to speak. Yeah. You know, come 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 to the gigs and and you know obviously to, to come and check you out. Yeah, it's just it's it's really nice having that sort of interaction as well. You know, it's like it's it's great because obviously I go college. It's it's all normal, and you know, it's uh, I'm just you know I'm I'm your average I'm your average little chimney sweep boy or whatever you want to call me. <laughs> um, but like having having that one day where it feels like you know you are a bit of like a rock star almost, and there's all these people there and they're all singing lyrics back to you. It's like that's, you know, it's just it's mint. It's a mint feeling. Yeah, you know, and it's very, it's very humbling as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, sure, I can imagine. And um, you just mentioned in there actually um, about people wearing your t-shirts um, at the at the Manchester Academy Free Show. Mm. Um, you're running um, a competition at the moment, aren't you, over on your Instagram page, right? So just yeah. tell us a little bit behind about that and sort of what the you know what the what the idea is behind it as well. Well, depending when when do you reckon this podcast will go up? Well, I'm hoping it'll be out on Wednesday. That's the hoping plan. it'll be out on Wednesday. Hang on, what what day is that? Okay, so as you lot are watching this, there are four days to join the giveaway. Um, but, no uh, pressure. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Listen, it's all good. No. Um, the the main motive behind it is to really get other people being creative with the songs, and you know, people giving their own interpretation of it, um, and then making something cool out of it. Because the whole the whole point of the giveaway is um, to make a video, um, or you know, do something creative in that video with the song in the background in like all the socials and stuff. It's not not only is that you know benefiting me in terms of like you know social media push, but it's yeah. also benefiting other people as they're getting free merch from it. Um, yeah. And also, it's they're creating something cool. And you know, I think I think I think I think that's the main thing. You know, really trying to. I don't want to come off as like, you know, sound like I'm Gary Barlow right now, but really trying, but really trying to inspire people. Do you know what I mean? And, try, and trying to get them doing something that will benefit them in the long run. Because you, you never know. I mean, someone might make a video of them, you know, um, drawing out the, the artwork or something, which someone actually has already. Um, but they might, that might inspire them to start doing art and start, you know, making cover art and start designing that yeah. sort of thing. Um, 
So that, that's, you know, that's really the key focus of it. Um, and, you know, people using this EP for their own gain and stuff like that, not just, you know, for me as well, but also so they get something cool out of it. Yeah, yeah, sure. And and uh, so there's what what prize that can we win? They can win t shirts. You can win a, a t shirt, which I'm wearing right now, actually. There you um, go. So yeah, <laughs> you, can, you can win this brand new t shirt. Um, you can also win a CD, which is and the CDs of the CD. EP, right? That's the CD of the EP, and you've also got a load of outtakes on there as well. Sorry, I'm, I'm selling out a bit now, I don't mean to. Caesar of Samax.com forward slash shop. It's happened already. <laughs> uh, I'm really happy with this design as well. Um, and Martin Lowry, who did the artwork, uh, it's really cool. So yeah, you can win that, and you can also win an A3 print as well. Um, there we go. So yeah, all signed by me if you want as well. I don't, <laughs> you know, if you want my grubby little mitts all over it, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, if you want to enter that competition, then um, Caesar's uh, uh, social media links will be in the episode bio. So do please go and uh, and check them out and. Um, obviously give them a follow, but more importantly, you know, yeah, enter the competition um, as well. But just going back quickly to the live, um, the live music, um, for those that maybe haven't seen you live and are maybe, you know, planning on on, on coming down to, to maybe a future live show, what is it about a seizure of somatic show, um, you know, that, they, that they're really going to enjoy? Why should they come down and see you? I think, I think, uh... All, always it's just the vibe of everyone everyone's always so nice to each other everyone's you know out there making friends and stuff um i think that i think that's you know one of my favorite things you know seeing seeing two people who i've seen commenting on my tiktoks then they meet up in real life and it's like oh i'm, I'm finally seeing you here at the game yeah. and stuff uh that's always really cool for me um you know there's lots of audience interaction as well you know i'll go up to your face i've got kermit here <laughs> and um, I, I always shove him in people's faces. Um, some people get severely uncomfortable, but, um, you know, I think I think they're just, you know, not able to handle it. They're not able to handle the pizzazz. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, I, I, th- I, th- I think it's personally, for me, what I get out of live shows is that sort of thing. If there's no barrier between the audience and you. And, you know, the audience are just as much a part of the show as you are, um, you know. And they're the ones who are able to, you know, really bring the vibe. Because if if the audience is dead and no one's dancing or moving or whatever, then the, the whole gig is terrible. Do you know what I mean? They'll go yeah. away having a bad time. I'll go away having a bad time. But, you know, the, uh, so far at my gigs, there's not been much of that. Um, and there's always, you know, a few people who are up for it and then other people get involved, you know, and it's sort of like a chain reaction thing. Um, so, yeah, I think, yeah. I think that's one of the main things. Yeah, sure. Okay. So um, obviously you are uh, a Manchester uh, based artist. So really just sort of a general question really about the sort of, you know, like the Manchester um, music scene, because obviously there's a there's a proud, a long and proud history, um, you know, of, of Manchester bands, you know, some some fantastic bands. You know, we, we know all the ones they are, obviously the Smiths, mm-hmm. Stone Roses, obviously Oasis. Um, Happy Mondays, uh, just to name a few there. And obviously there's a few, you know, sort of that are up and coming um, as well on the sort of, you know, underground new music um, indie scene, such as Spangled and Shade and, mm. and Roller. Um, so so why then, in your opinion, what is it about Manchester that you just keep on producing such fantastic artists? What What is it? I think everyone's just bored, really. I think that's the main thing. If you, you know, I mean, it's always raining up here. It's always depressing. No one likes each other. We're all miserable half the time. So usually we just stay inside and we, you know, listen to music, play music. And that's the way that it's always been. Um, I mean, that's how my uncle got into it. It's just because he was bored. He was like, right, well, I want to join a band. Do you know what I mean? Um, and doing that sort of thing. Uh, as well as, you know, the nightlife as well, going out to clubs and, and, and mm-hmm. live gigs um sadly a lot of that is dying down now though um and i think that's just because back then you when you'd go on a night out you wouldn't know who you got who you were going to see you'd have like a look on the gig list um and you'd scroll down and you'd see you know a, a band for example my dad saw um ocean color scene on on the uh gig list one uh, no no wait is it ocean color scene yeah is it ocean yeah ocean yeah color yeah, scene. yeah 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 he, he saw he saw them on the on the uh gig list 
and he was like oh that's a cool name i'm gonna go see them because he'd go off the name back then right. um but you know nowadays there's not really much of that and i think i think that's a massive shame and i feel like you know people just need to get back out there and they need to go out just have a good time nothing can harm you nothing can hurt you we live in a we, we live in manchester i know it's a pretty dangerous place at night but at the end of the day it doesn't matter because it's worth it to go see some brilliant live shows and just supporting that sort of you know small underground you know indie music scene and you might find someone who you really like so i think yeah get out there yeah definitely exactly. I, I agree there. with you there man definitely get out there there's so so much great uh so many great artists out there at the minute and i think you know there's a you know there's a good scene developing and you know mm. long may it, um long may it continue um mm. so on every uh this is the music meets podcast uh, we ask all of our guests a series of questions that are sort of designed to be a little bit more sort of like light-hearted um and help gotcha. the listeners find out a little bit more um about you the artists um, so the first question is, um, what artists on that underground new music scene have you been listening to over the last sort of 12 months or so? Well, there's there's Crook on the Wall, there's Montello, yeah. which are two, two of my favourites. They're very close mates of mine as well. Um, and I think they really separate themselves from everything else, which is like, you know, it can be like an Oasis copy or whatever. There's a lot yeah. of that in the scene, which, you know, I, th- I think Crook on the Wall actually spoke about when you had them on here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm very much in agreement with them that, you know, something needs to be done in order to draw draw yourself a bit more away from the roots of the scene. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously the Shade as well. Shade are really good. Yeah. Um, the Coltons. Yeah. Um, there's a lot, you know, like Dougal and stuff. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot of great, you know, really small, really young as well. Um artists in the manchester scene i think it's really great that we're all coming together and sort of you know being being best buddies and stuff like that and there's no there's no ego there's no you know competition and stuff and there's no people going oh you're, you know you're you're crap you can't play that you know but, um, yeah no, yeah I, de- I think that's great yeah definitely and uh just a little shout out there for um for crook on the wall massive massive fan of them and uh mm. i have to say that, that cole's voice is is, is incredible blows me by it really um and he is definitely absolutely um an actual fact the bands that you've listed there that make that sounds like a pretty good festival lineup to me as well so as we're in yes. the middle of yeah. festival season maybe <laughs> someone next year should uh should get that line up with you with you as well on the bill and um yeah, yeah, yeah. make it happen <laughs> yeah well that's that i mean that's the hope of venture fest because i've been in uh chats with harrison who's the owner of venture entertainment i've been in a lot of chats with him about you know even next year just you know um slight you know being like hey you should get you should get this you should get this band on stage they're, yeah. they're brilliant they're brilliant you know what i mean so yeah <laughs> <laughs> brilliant love that absolutely brilliant so um the next question is you're allowed to see one final song from your favorite artist in your favorite venue who are you choosing one final song yep so one one final song um from your favorite artist what, so, so like I'm going to die afterwards or something? No, no, no. Well, the, the band are potentially going to split up after this. After this oh, okay. Type of thing. <laughs> right. Well, can, can they can they already be a gone band? Can they not be around anymore? Yeah, they could. Yeah, they, they, they could reform potentially for a one off gig if you want. OK, right. So I'm going to say, even though rest in peace, John Lever, he's not here anymore. But I've got to say the Chameleons, Soul in Isolation as the final track of the night. It's a brilliant, it's a brilliant anthem. Just, it would be brilliant. Oh, what, what, what venue actually? Oh, I <laughs> see. No, no, now you've stumped me now because I don't know. There's too many to choose from. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I'm going to go with my personal dream venue, which okay. is playing on top of the broken down Wilco's next to my college. So <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to say on top, like, a bit like, a bit like the Beatles, um, roo- rooftop gig, yeah, but yeah. it's on the top of the Wilco's. Rest in peace, Wilco's as well. Um, <laughs> of all the yeah. places you was you were going to say there, you thrown me with that one. I wasn't expecting to uh, to hear that uh, as a venue choice. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. I look at it every single time I'm walking past um, when I'm like on my college break or whatever. I'm just like, just be great to play up there. <laughs> Imagine that, and then you've got all the college students surrounding, like down below and stuff, and they're all like, "Yeah, chameleons or whatever." I'd just be like, oh, that'd be brilliant. 
<laughs> have to uh, not that I'm encouraging this, of course, but you have to break in or something and uh, go. Oh, that's the thing. Well, I'd have to I'd have to get the council on side first. And I don't know yeah. if they'd be up for playing on top of the broken down world goes. No, no, health and safety gone mad these days, uh, right? For sure, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so um set the scene. And can you tell us about one of Caesar of Somatic's most memorable gigs? Oh, well, I've got, I've got to say, it's, it's, it's a bit of a, it's, it's a bit of a tyrant. I think, I think, I remember every single one for for different reasons. Um, can I list off all of them and and, get, and give like a short sentence to describe them? Or, yeah, go for it. it. Yeah. Okay. So the first Academy Three gig, it was, it was the first gig. That's what I know it as. Um, Club Academy. It was awful. I hated that gig. Nothing went right. Stuff was out of tune. Everything was bad. Um, <laughs> but it was nice. It was still on stage. It was still happy times. Uh, then, then I played the Deaf Institute, um, and that's you know that was a, that was a pretty fun gig. I don't know. I feel I feel like it was just cool to be playing the Deaf Institute because Johnny Marr played there and stuff, and I was like Johnny Marr, Johnny Marr, <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, and then after that, it was my headline gig at the Retro. For me, that's probably the most memorable just because it's the headline and it was the first time that I'd seen so many like fans there and stuff and they were all coming down for it and I had people traveling for it as well. Um, and that, that was really cool. Um, then there was, after that, it was uh, a Leeds gig. Leeds gig. I don't remember anything from that. It was an 18 plus gig, so I had to leave within like straight after I did my set. So... That was that was that was depressing. Uh, <laughs> uh, what else? Then we had the um, uh, the lodge at the Deaf Institute gig. Uh, that was great. That was like the first time that I'd seen a lot of people coming over from another band and and seeing me live and going, "Oh, I really like this." Um, and that's how, how it sort of started to pick up. Uh, then I had the Dougal gig at Northern uh, Quarter in Huddersfield. That was a really cool venue, and I remember that one specifically for the venue, just because it was brilliant and and. And the sound guy was excellent. He was so helpful. And it's always great when you have a really helpful sound guy. I love that. Um, then after that, it was the Academy 3 gig, which I've just played, and then Venture Fest. Um, and yeah, Academy 3, I don't know. I, I think it's got to be one of my favorite gigs I've ever played. I'm not going to lie. Just It was really cool being back there and seeing the evolution. So I think, I think yeah. that's got to be said, you know. <laughs> love that. Some uh, Yeah, some interesting... Little stories uh, there that you've that you've that you've told there about your gig in life um, so far. Um, do tell me if I'm rambling, by the way. Don't, yeah, no, don't, no, no. Don't feel right. afraid to interrupt me. Don't you know you're fine to go. <laughs> We've got five minutes, mate. Come on, stop talking about your the time that you saved a kid from a crocodile's mouth or something. That's completely fine. <laughs> no, fortunately, those days on this is the music are long gone now. We've uh, uh, we've actually paid for the version of uh, of Zoom rather than than um, yeah than just using the free one. Uh, so oh, you yeah. carry on. At the end of the day, as I say to everybody, it's all about you. So. You know, yeah, crack on and, and get as much as you want off your chest. That's what I say. Oh, yeah, um, so this one might this one might be a little bit um a little bit of stuff might stump you a little bit, maybe. Um what are your top three albums of all time? Oh right, okay. Let's should we should we ever should we ever scroll through the old vinyl records? Yeah, go right, for it. See. Okay. So I think oh Smith's album has got to be up. I was gonna say, because obviously you've got a poster there of, of uh, Johnny Marr and Morrissey. So which one's this one? I think uh, I'm going to stick this. You know what, actually? Yeah, I'm going to stick this in second. This is a bit out of order for some reason, but this was just the first one I saw, so I decided to pick it yeah. up. Second favourite album of all time. This is an original pressing as well that my music teacher uh, gave to me. And this is wow. like 80 quid. And, it, you know, we'd always sit down and talk about um, the Smiths because obviously I was getting bullied. So I'd always just go to the music room and just have a chat. He gave me this one day and I was like, really you know, legend um wow favorite, favorite track on there i mean it's the obvious choice but there is a light that never goes out <laughs> it's just it's the perfect track it's a perfect prop track you know you yeah really go he's so there. good um okay third third it's got to be said there it isn't by the last whole earth catalog this is uh a, a new it, it literally came the, the vinyl came out like two weeks ago uh, this is an artist that I definitely recommend. He inspired a lot of the EP as well, and he's just a lovely guy. We've had loads of great chats. Um, and my favourite track on it is Wax Existential. It's just, it's genius. It's genius all the way through. And I hate using the word 
because I feel like I'm bigging people up too much, but it really is. It's a genius album. It's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> um, and then... Here we go. Oh, get drum Are, roll, you ready? <laughs> Are you ready, Mark? Are you ready, I though? I think so. I think so. Strange Times by The Chameleons. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Best album of all time. I will never shut up about The Chameleons. I will never shut up about them. Um, and I got, got this for Christmas. Um, and it is. It's always going to be my favourite album of all time. Um, and has my favourite track of all time on there, Soul in Isolation. So it's it's got to be said. It's just it's genius. It's perfect. The artwork on it is brilliant. I just I can't. I can never get enough yeah. of it. I need to stop talking about it, or else I'm going to cry. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't, don't want, want to that. do that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that. No, no tears to be shed. No tears to be shed. <laughs> Not <right>. today, no. <laughs> so. Um, Judging there by your the three albums that you've just chosen, I reckon I've got a good idea who your dream collaboration might be. Um, but yeah, who would be your dream collaboration? Right. Um, well, it would have been John Lever. But yeah, obviously he passed away. Um, I think just having him on the drums would have just been a brilliant experience. I wouldn't have been able to take my eyes off him. Um, I think. I think. My main dream collaborations, though, obviously, Johnny Marr. It's got to be said. You can't not yeah. have the legend on. Uh, but also uh, Dave Fielding from the Chameleons. Yeah. Because um, I've gotten, I, uh, I've been, you know, exchanging messages with him before, and he's a really lovely guy. Obviously, knows my uncle as well. So there's that sort of, there's that sort of connection in there. Um, and you know, I, I just think, you know, like imagine just one day. I know this is all fantasy land, by the way. But imagine one day. I've made it. I've, I've made it to Reading and Leeds or whatever. I've done it. I'm there. I'm on main stage, and then I'm like, right now I'm gonna now now we're gonna play a track that none of you know, and I bring out Dave Fielding. No one knows who he is. He's just this really tall, lanky guy. This, just this really lanky, tall old guy. And we're like, right, we're gonna play Soul in Isolation, and then we start playing Soul in Isolation. A big pit opens up, and it's like, yeah. Um, but yeah. His solo stuff is brilliant as well. Northern Star, it's a brilliant instrumental album. It's got to be said. So give that, yeah. give that a listen. More recommendations here. Four, we've had four recommendations off you tonight. <laughs> Loving <Yeah>. this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Tom, what? Um, obviously we've spoken about what you've done in the past, and obviously what you've been doing, um, like currently. Um, but what are the rest of the plans uh, for Seizure of Cymatics uh, for for 2024? 2024, I think I want to get another two singles out by the end of the year. I think that's the main thing because I've been very sloppy with actual releases because this is my first release in six months, uh, the EP. Um, but uh, yeah, I want to get the next two singles done. I can reveal what one of them is, but I can't reveal what the next one after that is going to be. So the next one's going to be Unlovingly Lie because it's a brilliant track to play live. And I just love it. Um, and, you know, keep on playing gigs as well. By the end of the year, I think I do want to have my um, headline or another headline rather. Um, yeah, for now, it's going to be supporting Crook on the Wall at 28th of September at the Retro, heading back there. So, yeah, and it's always great to be supporting you, mate. So what, what, what's after that? I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> well, thank you. We, we love getting um, exclusives. On the shows, so that's that's great to, that you've been able to share that with us, and um, that gig that you've mentioned as well with Crook on the Wall, I'm sure, uh, is going to be a fantastic evening. Uh, two brilliant uh, artists there. If you're in the Manchester area, then then do go and uh, check check that night out. As I say, going to be a fantastic night, um, I'm sure. But Tom, unfortunately, that is the end um, of the This Is the Music Meets podcast. Thank you Thank so you much, very much for having me. Not a problem at all. <laughs> Firstly, thank you very much for coming on. Um, but also as well, thanks for being such a great guest. Um, I've really enjoyed that um, and, and, and really love getting to find out the story about you as an artist and how you're trying to develop your sound. Um, and also as well, the, you know, the, some of the fun sort of stuff there that we just did um, at the end. But before I do let you go, um, can you let the This Is The Music Meets listeners know where they can find you uh, on social media? You can find all of my socials from my website which is caesarofcymatics.com just head there it's on the main home page and you can you know you can scroll through you can find whatever you want if you want to go to my youtube channel go to that you can just click on the button and you're there instagram tiktok spotify twitter facebook all the rest of it 
you know, it's all on that website. So yeah, just head there and you'll be able to get there. Brilliant. Great stuff. Well, we'll put uh, those links um, up in the episode uh, bio uh, so that everyone can uh, give you a little cheeky little follow um, along as well with the link uh, to the debut EP if it weren't for them um, as well. Tom, as I say, thanks very much uh, for coming on. Um, One thing uh, that I didn't mention earlier on, um, and you did sort of allude to it a little bit earlier on in the podcast, is that you um, you are obviously just 17. Um, and you've clearly got an incredible talent. Um, and as I say, obviously over 44,000 Spotify streams um, will testify uh, to that. So don't just believe what I'm I'm saying. It, 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 it's there. You need um, to stop um, number dropping me, man. I don't, <laughs> I don't know these analytics and you're just telling me them out of nowhere. What, what is are you lot all right? Are you, are, you all, are you all okay? You see, 44,000 streams is far too many. Please. <laughs> Go listen to someone else for a bit, please. <laughs> well, in in my opinion, um, it, it is fully deserved. Um, I've re- I've really enjoyed um, listening to the to the journey so far. Um, and as I say, I, I wish you continued success. It does sound like you've got some really exciting um, and interesting sort of you know bits and pieces coming up um, in the, you know the next sort of couple of months and stuff. So I wish you good luck with that. Um, and Thank so you I think, much. do think that you are um, a really, really top artist. So good luck and keep at it, man. Thank you so much, mate. Thank you for having me on. And all that leaves me to say is to thank everyone for tuning in to the latest This Is The Music Me the podcast. Please subscribe so you never miss out on any brand new episodes. And if you're loving the podcast, show us some love by leaving us a five-star rating and written review, as it really does help the bands and artists we interview to be discovered. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you very, very soon for another episode of the This Is The Music Meets podcast.